Isaac says, Dad, I believe God and I am a virtuous son. No, she is not pregnant. Say, okay, I believe you, my son. Abraham is pacing at night. Sarah is sleeping. He's pacing in the house. Tomorrow morning, Isaac needs to die. And he's asking himself, Lord, how, how is it that you want to kill the son of the promise? You are, you are not the other of confusion. That I know. But I also know that I heard your voice clearly. So what is going on? And he said, okay. How was Isaac born? My own body was dead. My wife's body was dead. So somehow, somehow, God did a miracle. My own body came alive. My own wife's body came alive. That's how the two of us have been able to give birth to Isaac. What if I kill him and God brings it back to life? The way he brought back my manhood to life. The way he brought back to life my wife's womb. What if I kill him and that's what God wants to do? So the Bible says, from whence he received him figuratively. And when I, Abraham, was done reasoning all those things, I know God is not a liar. Okay, now, when you read Genesis 18, is it is 18 or verse 22? Chapter 22, sorry. When you read verse 5, let's check. Let me show you something. Genesis 22, verse 5. Genesis 22, verse 5. He says, and Abraham said to his servants, Settle down and stay here with the donkey. And he says, Myself and this young man, we are going to climb the mountain. He has settled this matter in his mind last night. He said, We are going to climb up the mountain. We will go and worship the Lord. And we will come back again to you. Because I have reasoned this thing now. There is no way Isaac is going to die. Verse 8. <laughs> Isaac, after he has settled the issue. <laughs> he has settled the issue of the servants. He is climbing the mountain with the sun. And Isaac is saying, Father, we've been in this journey of going to sacrifice over and over again. Every other time we've gone, you've carried a lamp and you've carried fire and you've carried a knife. Now there is something missing in this articles here. What's going on, daddy? And Abraham, again in faith, he says to him, and Abraham said to, to him, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. It is not you I am going to sacrifice. It is not you. The day David faced Goliath, you know what he began to say? He said, look, Goliath, you are bigger than me. But let, there's something that I know within me that is settled within my spirit. It is when I remember how God has walked with me from when I was but a boy. I was taking care of my father's sheep and the bear came and took a little lamb and went with it. I went after the bear. Something in me told me that I can handle it. I went after the bear, took it by my hands and toy and rescued the kid out of the teeth of the bear. The lion as well came and I did the same thing. I had the same feeling. And Goliath, look, it's like that thing I felt that day. I am feeling it now. So I am sure you are going to die like the, the lion. <laughs> there is power in going back to reason out the things and the journey God has walked with you. Don't always sit, just, just focus on the situation on ground. Sometimes travel back in time. See, when I was in Form 4, and there was no school fees for me to write the exam, the Lord showed up in a mysterious way. I'm giving you my own story. I, 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 I practically was out of school almost half of the time I was in school. Half of the time scheduled for school. I was at home because there was no school fees. Sometimes I will come back and by the time I'm entering the class on Monday, Tuesday, the exam time table is out. Guess what God did? At, at, at the verge of when 
I was about to finish high school, second term in form four, God sent an angel. And I entered into the boarding school for the first time in second term form four. Paid my school fees when I graduated, when I finished, I had arrears that I needed to transfer to somebody else. Yani, fees ilikuwa mingi, siku maliza, let me speak so I so you understand. Ilikuwa mingi, hai kuisha, ilibidi tutafte mtu tufanye transfer, ndiyo asome na ayo. The same boy that was at home almost half of his time in school, now the Lord has come in his might and in his power. So when I don't have house rent, I remember that day and I tell the devil, you have missed it a long time ago. Your failure has not just begun today. You started failing then. You shall fail again today. Haya kapaka suta. There is faith that comes by you thinking through the journey God has walked with you. you go to the hospital and the doctor gives you an evil report. Has God healed you before? Has God healed you before? Even if it was just a mere finger ache or headache or anything, you just go before the Lord and say, Father, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. The last time I checked, you have not stood up from that throne you sat on when you healed me of that headache. And so cancer shall be unto you as it was to the headache. I'm teaching you faith. That's how you build yourself in the house of God. Receive the word with what? Somebody say faith. Mix it with faith. Mix it. And when you do, what, one of the indications is that your heart begins to enter into a dimension of thanksgiving and praise. They believed his word and therefore they sang his praises. Psalms 119 verse 164. I love you Lord for your mercies never fail me all my days. He's gone back into the days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. He says that hmm? Psalms 119 verse 164. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Seven times a day. <laughs> How many times? Seven times in 24 hours or in 12 hours, depending on where your day ends. He says, do I praise thee because of what? Your righteous judgment. He's talking about the word of God. Keep reading. Seven times a day, do I praise you because of your what? Righteous word. He says, great peace are they which love your word and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend them. Let, let it be that their house has been locked. There's, there's something that wells up joy in them. Great peace. Great peace. Have they. When you believe God, the second thing that happens to your heart is that you enter into a dimension of peace that cannot be explained. After praise comes peace. He says, great peace have they which love your law and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend them. Nothing. He says, let the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your heart and your soul. When you believe God, 
you have peace. <laughs> Remember Jesus? Jesus on he is on a journey. He is sailing. And there is kuna zinaitangwa nini? Dhoruba na mawimbi. They are they are they are wild weeds and, and the, the boat is being tossed to and, and, and back and forth. The scripture now says something. The Bible said and water began to enter into the boat and Jesus was sleeping. Where? In the lower deck. Now, if water enters a boat, where do you think it will go first? And the water didn't wake Jesus up. He, he didn't just wake up because he, it's okay. What you can, it's okay. I'm fine. You can because he is the word. He is the word. He is the word. The Bible says, "By him was nothing made that was made." <laughs> and he's, he's just peacefully sleeping there. Until the people who water had not reached to. The water is in the lower deco. And they are up here. There is no water. They run to him. They say, Master, carry us down now that we perish. And Jesus is looking at them. He said, oh, Your problem is not that you are afraid. Your problem is not the water. Your problem is that you don't have faith. If you had faith, you will know that even if the boat sank, God can make you walk on water. So call a kapala de yamahando. The landlord, the, my former landlord chased me out of a one bedroom house. I left her house. I entered the two bedroom house. I couldn't pay 10,000. I entered into a house of 25,000. That's how you punish the devil. <laughs> ah, and, and you see, we, we just didn't have an argument. I said, here is your money. She said, I don't want your money. Get out of my house. I said, done deal. I stepped out. I stepped out in anger and in faith. Who does that? You're being chased out of a one bedroom house. You can't afford it. And then you step out and say, I need a known compound. That's to tell the devil you're not devil enough. The Nigerians will say they're not born you well. Let me tell you. There are some things you, by, by reason of how you've walked with God. Don't let the enemy just toast you to and fro by every wind of, of, of trouble. Sometimes in persecution, just calm down. Put on very cool blues and get a glass of cold water if you can't afford soda and just sip it. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. I just, just break out into worship. Yesterday we were here praying. And when we were about concluding the prayers, we were, we, were, we were about to pray. They, actually, I was the last person in the prayer of agreement to sit down. And, and suddenly, I felt an angel standing behind me. The people who were with me didn't know why I, I started singing. They thought I was just, you know, expressing. I just looked back and I saw a huge angel standing behind me. And I began to sing. The heavens and angels bow. Was that not the song I sang? The redeemed we worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You must come to a place and be conscious of God more than the devil. Be conscious of his word. The highest knowledge you need to have is the heart the knowledge of his word. What God is saying about you is the knowledge that should dominate your head, not the situations you are in. So, 
the highest thing I do if I am having pressure, too much pressure around me, you will never catch me with the face God what are we going to do? Never. never. If, if I am so that is, that is pressure has mounted to the highest peak I get to bed and I sleep I sleep. Maybe in rest he will come. <laughs> I cannot be having a headache and not sleep at the same time. I just, I think my wife knows if, if you see me get into the bedroom and sleep during the day, something is wrong. That's how I express my faith to God. You know what, God? This is your business. I'm going to bed. And I sleep off. Believe you. The word of God. Number three. Is that the word of God. Must be acted upon. If it is going to profit you. We, remember we are in the school of the word. Right? Yeah. The word of God must be believed, must be received, and then it must be acted on. Must be acted on. This is the separating ground for faith filled results or empty declarations. The realm of action, the realm of action is a separating ground between empty declarations and faith filled results. Some of us hear God like we hear our neighbor. But our problem is that we don't act when God speaks. We don't act. You know, one of my daughters gave me a story. Do you, do you have time for a story? Do you have time for a story? We still have like one hour, one and a half hours, something like that. <laughs> one of my daughters told me a story and she said she gave out her phone to somebody. And then that week, as she was in prayer, God asked her to call someone and ask him for a phone. You know what you and me will do? Your ego is here. What if I didn't hear God? What if I call and the person thinks I'm trying to manipulate them? I've been there. That's why I know how you will think. I've been there myself. What if what if, what if, what if, what if? And that what if, she stayed with the what if for two, three, four, five days. One month later, she calls, the, the person calls her now. And the person is asking, why have I not seen you online? I've been following your, your pastor's uh, preachings and all that but I've not seen you online what is the problem she said ah sorry I was actually going to call you some weeks ago I gave out my phone I didn't have I don't have a phone to go online and the person asked her why did you not tell me I had two new phones and I needed to give one out until last week I was not sure who I should give it to it was last week I gave it to somebody. The person did not miss words. He said, you made me give somebody your phone. Sila. Yeah, Sila. Sometimes your pride will make you sleep hungry. When God already told you who to call and get dinner. When God already told you what to... My own story, make I tell you my own so that you not go be like saying other people's story they talk. 
my my own story God told me somebody has 1.5 million shillings for me and I was supposed to I saw the person preparing the money I was supposed to call the person and say look this is what God has told me I need that money I didn't call out of respect and stupidity I didn't call I just stayed stayed three months later I'm sitting down with this man first of January last year I'm just sitting down with this person and we're having a conversation and he's like you know there is there's some money I wanted to give you but I have spent out of it so it's there's about 650 remaining please allow me some time I fill it up and give it back to you till today I've not seen it what if the day God give that money in full I picked up my phone first of all I would have been a voice of confirmation that God was talking to him I told you the other day I went to just lead prayers for Apostle Dennis and, and, and Rev Lee and I took the microphone, led prayers for 30 minutes, all since Cathedral, and I came down. As I was coming down from the prayer, God told me, so and so, it, they are guest preacher. I said, guest preacher, has your offering today? I said, ah, God, how do they invite somebody to come and preach? And me, I collect offering from that person. I mean, God, even you, are you not seeing that he get us a bee? But I had learned my lessons. So when I came down, I went, I, I dragged the apostle. I said, look, <laughs> there's something God has told me. And uh, I'd rather obey God and offend you. God has said me, has told me that that your guest has an offering for me. Now, while we were talking, she was the first person to minister. So after prayers, praise and worship then she went up when she finished ministering I don't want to mention her name when she finished ministering she came down from the altar and came the people who were sitting here there was one lady then uh, reverently then Apostle Dennis then myself she started shaking people from here shook this one shook this one shook this one when she came to, to me she said give me your phone number she took out her phone and went straight to her embassy she typed and 20, sent me 12,000 instantly yes it's not 1,200 12 or 12 shillings I'm looking forward to 12,000 dollars this one is in shillings somebody needs to part with dollars you are not going to say amen because jealousy is like he's part of your inheritance. <laughs> Listen to me. Learn how to hear God and act. Because sometimes it takes that kind of faith and believing God. Whatever he says, he says, that's how you enter into your heritage. Glory to God. Act. Act. Act on the word. James says, he being not a forgetful hearer. Chapter 1 verse 25 of James. He not being a forgetful hearer. He says, he who that continues into the law of liberty and continues therein, he says, and is not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. So whatever you hear, there is work to be done inside the word. Every time God speaks, as you hear it, there is work to be done in that word. Find that work and work your grace. Find that work and work your grace. So, today in the school of the word, we are looking at the fact that the word of God is the revelation of God's will and God's mind and God's ideas for you. I, 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 I started my message from the back just like last week. 
So, whenever you read God's word, remember we were looking at the point of the power of God's word, right? This is point number five now, or six, that the word of God is a revelation of God's will, God's mind, God's thought towards you. The word logos, the scripture says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word logos there actually means the thoughts, the idea, the, the, the thinking patterns of God. So as we study the scripture, what we see is the revelation of God's mind concerning our lives. And we must receive it, we must believe it, we must act on it. I'm finishing. So every time God speaks, it is a revelation of his will. This the Bible calls him, I think in Ephesians 1 11. He oh no, I'm not sure. He says it is God or calls God the one who does everything according to the counsel of his will. That is, there is nothing God will do except by the counsel of his will. He does all things according to the counsel of his will. You need you know you need to know scriptures so that when I am stuck you can redeem me. Glory to Jesus. He does all things according to the counsel of his will. So that now God does not do anything. God will not engage on anything as far as it concerns man except it is within the counsel of his will. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. So you need to um, remind yourself. I was right too. I don't even know why I doubted myself. Ephesians 1.11 <laughs> He says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things. Somebody say all things. He works all things according to the counsel or after the counsel of his own will. So the word of God is a revelation of God's will for you. Generally, and sometimes specifically, you will be reading a scripture and out of scripture, a rema word will come out of it for you and you know, this is God's will for me now. When you find it, what do you do? You receive it and you do what? Believe it and then you do what? You act on it. So the scripture, one of the most powerful things about God's word is that it is the revelation of his will and of his intents and of his thoughts. This is the highest knowledge by which you must operate your life. Don't allow your life to operate by the knowledge of what the doctor told you. I know the doctor said that you have a problem with your kidney. But what is the word of God saying? Because what the word of God said is a revelation of his will and it is higher than the report of the doctor. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. I say whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. His report. His report says I am. His report says I am. His report says, I am healed. His report says, victory. So I believe God's report against any other kind of report. But let me ask you a question. Do you even know God's report over your life? Let's begin from there. 
there's no problem that you don't believe the report of the devil okay what's the report of God about you <laughs> it's not what is in a song that is what you must find for yourself find for yourself Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they looked at the king they said look king we are not careful to answer you in this matter because we know not, do, not we had we didn't hear about this God. We know him. The God we serve has the capacity to deliver us. And looking, even if he chooses not to deliver us from your hand, we have made up our mind to serve him and never to bow to your idol. Now that's a man who knows the God he believes. So Daniel 11.32, the big part of it, he says, they that know their God, they shall be strong. They shall be strong. Because there are certain circumstances in life that will come that will sap away every little strength left in you. There has to be something you know. A revelation of what God is saying. A revelation of God's will concerning my life. So he gave you a counsel in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. He says, while we look not at the things that are seen. Let's begin from verse 15. Let's begin from verse 15. Let's, let's look at. For all things, please read with me now. Are for your. All things are for your. That the abundant grace. Through the thanksgiving of many. Reabound to the glory of God. Give us a new King James Version please. Or something simpler. NIV, NLT, anything. Just any. Okay. For all things are for your sake. That grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Keep reading. Verse 16. He says, therefore, we don't do what? This is what I wanted you to see. Therefore, we do not what? Now, come on, read it now. Therefore, we don't do what? Lose, heart, lose hope or lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing. Now that is the circumstances that surround you. Even though the challenges around us do not look like what God called us. Yet we don't lose hope. Yet the in one man is being renewed day by day. Now this is the reason for the renewing of the inward man. That we don't look at the things that we can see. We fix our gaze on him. On the counsel of his will. He says therefore we do not lose heart. We don't give up hope. Even though the circumstances around us look like we are finished. He says but inside us there is something that is giving us strength to move forward. Keep reading verse 17. Verse 17. He says, For our light affliction. Ooh, it takes revelation to call affliction light. Yeah, it takes revelation to call affliction, persecution, light. And, and just take it with joy. It takes revelation. No one man told us in Kirinyaga last week, the other week. He said, This thing called life and ministry is not by how old you've, you've been in it. You can't brag I have been in ministry for 30 years. It is by revelation. The light you see determines your result. The light you see determines your level. So he says, but our light affliction, which is but for a moment. So two things Paul has a revelation of. Number one, that the affliction is not as heavy as the enemy makes it look like. Number two, he has a revelation that this is not permanent. <laughs> it's not going to last forever. You think I am going to be jobless forever? No. You think I am not going to, I'm going to walk, you know, route 11, legged this bends. I'm not going to walk on my leg for all my life. I'm using legged this bends now. Tomorrow I might be on a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I'm not giving you hope. I am reading scripture for you. That our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working in us or for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory then he tells you because you know this look not at the things that are seen we 
look not for we look not for we look not at the things that are seen he says because those the things that our eyes can see lack of house rent lack of food lack of a car lack of a good job lack of a husband lack of a child everything sickness in our body all these things that the eyes of men can see they are temporal Kazuala parata they are temporal they are subject to change they can be altered something can be done and they are no more he says but we fix our gaze on that which is eternal the word of god the revelation of his will the revelation of god's idea and thought about me so there has to be a knowledge you have that settles in your spirit man this is it this is it this is God's word for me. This is God words for me. God's word for me. And I settle my heart at it. I settle my heart at it. It may look like God is getting late. <laughs> look, my brother, my sister. In God, there's nothing like he came late or he came early. I told you, you can buy your dream car, buy your dream house, buy your dream plane, marry your dream wife. In one day, one miracle. One miracle. I asked you a question. Christine, if God gave you a billion dollars today, you realize you exhausted all your dreams. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not saying your dreams are small. But the truth of the matter is that a little miracle as just a billion dollars can exhaust your dream realm. Don't joke with God. Don't joke with God. Some of you, you've not even gotten to the realm of dollars. If he only give you one million Kenya shillings, dream finished. Blessed is the man that can dream in the realm of what is he has not seen. Blessed is that man. Because now he is extending his boundary. He's extending his boundary. The other day I was going somewhere with my wife and we saw this big portion of land. I looked at this. I asked her, is this not a good place to put a hospital? Just a philanthropic hospital built state of the heart equipment everywhere. Doctors employed treatment for free. That's Pastor Sam for you. So God knows if he puts a billion dollars in my hand, it's still not enough. He might do something but it's not enough. It's called vision. It is what attracts raw vision. Let me ask you a question. Do you know the revelation of God's will for your life? He says to Jeremiah, I think good thought towards these people, but they don't know. They don't know. I know the thoughts I think towards them, but all they are thinking is about their Babylonian captivity. They won't worship me. They have no time for sacrifice and offerings because all they are seeing is that they are captives. But I, the Lord, know the thought I have towards them. It is not of good and not evil. I want to do them good, but these people are not thinking in the same level with me. We are in the school of the word. It is the revelation of God's will for you. So you must trust God with me, people, that as you open the pages of scripture, God will begin to open your eyes that you begin to see the will of God, the intents of God, the mind of God concerning your life and it will elevate your life to the next level. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Let's finish up by this. When you understand this, then suddenly you realize that we don't gather because it's a Sunday morning. You realize we don't do Wednesday Bible study, Thursday, you know, Friday prayer night. We are not trying to raise offerings to sustain the church. That's not the reason why we are gathering. We are gathering in Mount Zion. Because there is something that the scripture has commanded us to do. We, we have an opportunity to have an encounter with God. An encounter with the Holy Spirit. And most importantly, an encounter with his word. When we gather together. 
what does the Bible call the church? First Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. First Timothy 2 15. He calls the church the pillar and the ground of truth. He says nevertheless 315 not 215, 315. I need to go back and settle this matter. Yes. And without controversy. This is 16. 315. Yes. But, I, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself. Where? In the house of God. So God is expecting that you are going to his house. Are you hearing? We don't just gather because it's another Sunday morning. It's another Bible study. It's another prayer meeting. It is home cell day. All these things are not, we are not gathering because every time, you know, we, we, we insist you must not show up in the presence of God with an empty hand. That's, that's, that's not our motivation. The motivation is that we know there is a way we ought to conduct ourselves and we are coming to the church. The house of God. Which is the church of the living God. The pillar and the ground of the truth. So when we come to church, we have an opportunity to fellowship one man with another. And as we do so, there is communication of grace. Do you notice that the scripture says, let every man minister to the other person according to the grace that has, given to, has been given to him? Amen. I said amen. Give me First Peter chapter 4 verse 10. I have many things to say to you. Yeah, I have many things to say to you, but time is not on my side. First Peter 4.10 Apart from coming to the place of just reading and studying the word of God, please read that scripture with me. Want to go? As each one has received what? A gift. Wait there. Look at your neighbor. Look at their face straight in their eyes. Ask them, do you have a gift from the Lord? If they say no, just stand up and walk to another person. That one is not going to help your life. He says, each and every one of you has received a gift. Minister it. The gift you've received from the Lord, sir. Minister to me. He says, minister to one another as God's stewards of the manifold grace of God. So when we meet, it's not just Pastor Sam that is ministering. As we finish service and you're having a conversation with somebody, they are sharing their experience of last week and grace, the gift of God in you begins to manifest and you're giving counsel. Maybe your ministry is like Barnabas to encourage people. And, and, and as we are having fellowship, somebody is catching the glimpse of God's will for themselves. This is why we gather. The second reason why we gather is because according to God, now I have to be careful about this, according to God, the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. But it is not every church that is a pillar of the ground and the ground of truth. According to God, do you know why the scripture will keep drumming it that every time Jesus would speak and Paul would speak to the, to the pastors, quote unquote, he will tell them feed the flock. Acts 20:28. 20, feed the flock. Feed the flock. When he talked to Peter, Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest me more than this? He said, yes master, you know I love you. He said, feed my flock. He says, take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he has persisted Purchase, sorry, with his own blood. Next verse. Verse 29, he says what? Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers. Hmm? Therefore, take heed to yourself. What is going on? He's hanging. 
Can you go back to verse 28, please? Yes. He says, therefore, take it to yourself, to the flock, shepherd them, shepherd them, feed the flock, feed the flock. Is because God expects that when we come to church, something is coming that is the, the, the truth. So, in, in Malachi chapter 2 verse 17, he says that the mouth of the priest should keep knowledge. Out of Zion should proceed the law. I hope you know Zion is the, is the house of God. Eh? He said so, when we gather together, out of the lips of the man standing behind the pulpit, let's not just hear how he took a plane and, 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 and went to London and, and how he met uh, Zuckerberg on, on, on first class because he was he was he was uh, 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 flying uh, uh, what is it KLM and, and, and all those kind of let, let's not hear what we should hear from the mouth of the priest we're in Malachi chapter 2 verse 17 what we should hear from the mouth of the priest is as the mouth of the priest must keep the knowledge of the law of God ye have we read the Lord with your words. Yet you say, in what way have we we read him? In that you say, everyone does evil. And is good in the sight of the Lord. And he delights in them. What did I miss? Okay, it's not verse 17. Sorry, verse 7. I miss something. I told you I need to go back and settle this matter. For the lips of the priests should keep knowledge. Somebody say keep knowledge. Say keep knowledge. So if your pastor is not keeping knowledge and it's not just any kind of knowledge, it is that people should seek the word, the law. That, that law there is the word of God. Should seek the law from his mouth. If that's not what is coming out of your pastor, he's not helping you you're not helping him. Are you with me? When God began to prophesy by the prophet Isaiah concerning the church and, and, and what the church should become in the latter days, he began to write in Isaiah chapter 2, I think beginning from verse 4 now, um, Holy Ghost help my life. Holy Ghost help me. Verse 3. He says, Many people shall, He begins by saying, that It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain. You understand? Then he says, It will be established at the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above all the hills and the nations shall flow into it. He's talking about the church. Then he says, Many people shall come and say, the people who are flowing, the nations that are flowing to the church, what would they come and say? Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. That's the church. He says, what will they go to do? That he will teach us his ways. Because when he does so, we will now choose to walk in his path. For out of Zion, out of the church, should proceed or go forth the law. And the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. To the end that when you hear the law, you go out there and work it. So we started by saying, you receive it and then you believe it and then you work it out on it act on it this is why the gathering together of the brethren is important because God said I will give you pastors after my own heart and they shall feed you with truth and with knowledge we gather together to look at the perfect law of liberty and as we look at it we are being grown, matured and established in the counsel of God's will for our lives. That is the power of the word of God. Stand up on your feet. Let's pray and go home.
promise you will be done in a, in a few. Have you been blessed? You learned something? The reason why we take time to prepare, study scriptures, read the word of God, and do all those kind of things is because when we come here, we are accountable to God. I want you to lift up your hands and just tell God, Father, I bless you for the word I have heard this morning. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship his Lift up your hands and just give him praise. I'm not asking you to join me to sing. I'm just what telling you to, to give him praise and thank him for the words you have heard. For what you have received this morning. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. Worship is holy name. I give you praise. Thank you for rebuking me. Thank you for correcting me. Thank you for instructing me in righteousness. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my, my soul. Worship is holy name. Come on, pray. Just give him praise, somebody. I am grateful that I heard your word this morning. I am grateful for the revelation of the counsel of your will. I know where I have been missing my way because you've taught me. And I am schooled in truth. I understand the ways of the Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we give thanks. Now I want you to lift one hand and put the right hand on your chest. And say with me, Father, I ask that you give me the grace to receive your word. With joy, with gladness of heart, with meekness. Every time you minister to me. Again say father. I ask. That you give me the grace. To receive your word. To receive your word. With meekness. With joy. With rejoicing. Every time you speak to me. In the name of Jesus. Again say with me father. I ask. That you give me the grace by the gift of faith to believe your word. Whatsoever you say concerning my life, give me the grace to believe it, to receive it, and to mix it with faith. In the name of Jesus. And say with me, Father, Father. give me the grace. To act on your word every time you speak. Every time you speak. So that your word may profit my life. In the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice and just ask God for those three things. You're not looking at anybody, you're not looking at your neighbor. It's your personal moment with God. You know how many times God has spoken and you didn't have the grace to receive it. You know how many times God has spoken, you received his word, but there was no joy to keep it. There was no peace in your mind. You didn't believe what God said. There are many times you have believed the word of God. You have even declared it, but then you didn't have an opportunity to mix it with actions. Lord, I ask for these three dimensions of your word. In the protocol of receiving that which you speak. Give me the grace to receive. 
give me the grace my father to believe what you say and the capacity to act on it that your word may effectively work in me 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 Kama vile jana Lina guvu leo Mile Imba lime Lime Inu Lime inu Liwa neno lako Kama vile jana Lina nguvu leo Milele Kama vile jana Lina nguvu leo Milele Kama vile jana Do you kindly lift up your hands and let me make this prayer over your life. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We bless your holy name for your word this morning, this afternoon. You have ministered to our hearts. I have emptied myself of that which you give me for your people. Now, Lord, I ask that you breathe upon this word. The breath of life. And let it produce fruits in the heart of them that receive it. Where we have walked in disobedience and in ignorance. We are asking for your mercy this afternoon. That you will cause everybody's life in this house this morning. And them that will hear this message thereafter. Cause your grace to abide towards us. That our lives be transformed after the order of the counsel of your will. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on somebody give Jesus a clap. Give Jesus, give Jesus a hand. Give Jesus a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's give our offerings and our tithes this afternoon. Have you been blessed by the word of God? I believe um, maybe next week uh, we will look into one more thing and then we get into the school of power. Amen. Yeah, you better get yourself ready for it. We are not just going to teach. We are going to have the demonstration of the power we talk about. Amen. So we are, once we finish, I'm, I'm believing God will finish up with, with the, the, the school of the word next week. We get into wine press conference. Come on somebody clap for Jesus. Wine press is here. Wine press is here. Wine press is coming uh, um, the upper Sunday. We will be here beginning from Monday through to Sunday. Amen. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have a crusade out there. And then on Thursday, we come indoors. Invite your family and friends. The flyer is out. Um, just share it. Make sure you pay somebody's transport. Um, let's come and receive from these vessels of God. We have Pastor Robert Maina uh, coming to minister to us, Christfulness Center Githurai. 
Then we have Pastor Jennifer Icone. Um, uh, that's my elder sister coming all the way from the U.S. And then we have Pastor Eddie Fanny. Edwin Fanny is from Bamenda, Cameroon. And then we have a Pastor Emmanuel Gameni coming from Cameroon as well. Glory to God. All these vessels of God will be here before the end of this week. Somewhere around Friday, uh, Saturday, they will jet in and God will be glorified. Amen. Whether you like it or not, Wine Press is an international uh, conference. We have been implicated for life. We can no longer be small. So I said immediately after we are done with Wine Press 2024, we set the dates for wine press 2025 and we are going to Thika Stadium we are going to be on a, in a tent next year you don't have to say amen I have faith for it that's all I need <laughs> that's all I need my faith will move you to believe and to give and to be there just that's it I had faith for, for it this year my wife was like, man of God, I think you should calm down. You know? <laughs> I say, okay. But next year, tell yourself, your neighbor next year. Wine press. Wine press. Next year, we are in a tent. Not here. See, this is now the other side of what I didn't teach you is that I have no problem doing that tent and going there and we have 50 people. I have no problem. But I know we will have 5,000. You see yourself. You can't, your, your man is epileptic. It needs support to stand. <laughs> Amen. So, by God's grace next year, as the Lord will have it, we shall be out there for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. It's not to make a name. It's that I know that God wants to do something great with Wine Press. Wine Press started in a very bad year. 2020 was not an year to do any conference. We were in the house from February, March, April, May, June, July. August is when they said, okay, churches can begin to gather, but you must distance yourself. I started a fellowship in the house. That's when Christ's restoration was reborn again. I had only one member. Okay, two. My wife and Mike. While we were gathering in, in the house, I think Jackie and your husband, you came there. No, only you. You came there some two, three Sundays. While we were gathering in the house trying to think on what to do, God says, this is how you go back to church. Put up a conference. Call it Wine Press Conference. I said, okay, God, I believe you, but how do you do a conference with two people? Moved by faith, obeyed God, put up a conference, I called ministers in fear, the ones that could hold and cover my shame. I said, if you come here and it's me that is here, don't say a word to anybody. Just come preach to me and my wife and go back where you came from. So I called Pastor Fantas and Bishop John C. W. I think they were my bosom friends. So I said, oh, you, can, you guys come and let's see what is this that God wants to create. It was in that conference that God gave us a car that conference that had two members it is in that conference that God gave me a car it was that conference that shifted us from this tiny place I wish we, ha we can have a small clip of that, that conference and play it for you you will be shocked we were not more than 15 we were not but a day came I think that that day of the conference the, the intensity of the presence of God was too much. The barbs were going, almost blowing up. I'll show that clip on Sunday because I have it. I've kept my chronicles. Let me tell you, 
there is profit in hearing God, in receiving his word, in believing his word, and on acting on God's word. Now, I have received an instruction to go out. I can't stop it. Amen. God bless you. Can we give our offer? No, keep clapping until they hear your sound. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being part of this service. We bless the Lord for you. We know what God has done here. You will be a partaker of it. There are details on your screen right now that you can use to give.